Yes, we had to move that satellite sector out west, looking at Ghost West coverage, and let's focus on California because they're getting it once again. The water vapor channel showing a band of moisture and atmospheric river moving across the Los Angeles area and the southern San Joaquin Valley. And you can see offshore some indication of a deep upper level low getting that telltale cold air advection cumulus, very likely a cold pool aloft. And we can see some evidence of strong jet stream dynamics due to the strong gradients between dry air and moist air. So when we start talking about atmospheric rivers, we want to look at the integrated vapor transport. This is a product from UCSD and we're looking at California there. That's the atmospheric river coming on shore just west of Santa Barbara. That's earlier this morning. We bring that up to the current time this afternoon and we've got this wedge of four to 500 IVT values going right into Santa Barbara, Los Angeles and parts of Orange County. Before we go too much further, let's take a look at that surface analysis. Some of that Polar air in the eastern U.S. has moved down into Texas, Mississippi, and the Carolinas, pushing some rather dry dew points down into North Carolina. And here you go. If you want to look at those dew points, this is AWIPS looking at the initial analysis for about 1 p.m. Eastern. This brown up here, that's going to be the dry air flowing in. If you have a good computer display, you can read the values up here and that dark brown shading, that's going to be about 10 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So definitely pushing some dry air into much of the state. And if we look at the current surface plots, there you go. Temperature and dew point showing 70 over 17 at Raleigh and 67 over 14 at Greensboro. But down to the south, there's the tropical air dew points in the 60s from Myrtle Beach down towards Charleston. Some rather cold temperatures up in the north central U.S., single digits around Minneapolis, and out to the east, we've got that lake effect snow going on. Strong winds gusting up to 20 to 30 miles an hour throughout the northeastern U.S., and temperatures in the teens and 20s. In Texas, only mild air making it south, so we've only dropped into the 40s and 50s, and then down to the south. It's up above 80 degrees at Corpus Christi and 87 at Brownsville. Heading out west, we get into that stormy weather pattern. Not much going on in the southern Rockies, just this segment of a frontal boundary. However, as we get into Nevada, we start picking up that rather rare southeasterly flow there. There it is flowing up through Las Vegas, 45 degrees there, and snow at Tonopah. The core of the rain out there in Central California and some of that snow making it into some rather strange areas like Bishop, located about right here. They're usually in the lee side of the Sierra Nevada, so they tend to be dry, but not today. They're getting the snow. And we can do a little bit of investigative analysis here with the NEM model. Some strong onshore flow into Los Angeles and surrounding areas. Got that orographic lift right there along the coast. A little bit of subsidence on the lee side, but more precipitation as you go back towards the north. And some of that is in the form of snow. And if you look around on the SPC website and go into the mesoscale discussions, some interesting products here. Look at that blizzard just north of Los Angeles. Let's take a closer look at that. They've got the heavy snowfall with rates exceeding two inches an hour possible. And that's augmented by a low level jet that's embedded in that southerly flow. And with those steep lapse rates, some of that will be convective and winds will be whipping up that snow and that will reduce visibility down to zero in some areas. Interstate five north of Los Angeles at Tejan Pass is closed. And the alternate route on that is the 101. And you can see there's probably about an inch of snow on the ground. And I don't know if that's ice. There's probably a little bit of ice undercoat due to the warm ground. 
And further north in the Sierra Nevada foothills, that's Nevada City. Interstate 80 closed this afternoon from Colfax to the Nevada state line. Some areas getting 2 to 3 inches per hour up and down the Sierra Nevadas. That's a look at it on the surface chart. You can see the Los Angeles area in the low 50s. Not too bad there, but heavy rainfall across much of the Los Angeles Valley. And more of it as you go north, and you can see in the higher elevations, 30s. And heading up north into Bakersfield at the bottom of the San Joaquin Valley, some rather warm temperatures, maybe some adiabatic warming taking place there. The dew points do look a little bit on the low side there. Heading further up north, snow at Tonopah, half a mile visibility at Bishop with heavy snow and more heavy snow all the way up to Lake Tahoe. And as you go north, you get into some of the cold polar air. A very cold day, 33 degrees there at Portland. And Seattle, 35 degrees, 17 at Spokane. And you can see that easterly wind flowing down the Columbia River. If we go back 24 hours to yesterday, winds were quite a bit stronger, up to 35 knots. So definitely some canyon winds there. And of course, Portland had its second heaviest snowfall on record. What's interesting about that is just hours before the snow hit, the Weather Service put the chances of one inch of snow at 10% or less. So that was kind of a forecast bust there. They ended up with 10.8 inches, and that's the heaviest snowfall they've had in 80 years. So I'm pretty sure the media is having a field day with that forecast failure there. And heading up north, you can see, well, I forgot to mark this high pressure area, but there is one there. That's part of this complex of cold air extending from British Columbia into the Dakotas. Heading up to Alaska, another Pacific system moving into the coast. This is pretty typical weather for this time of year. A little bit of a warm up in the Alaskan interior and with that strong west-southwest flow that may be helping to boost those temperatures a little bit. Certainly a little bit of downslope warming in the McKenzie River Basin with temperatures up to 27 there south of Inuvik. Back there in the Northwest Territories in Nunavut, very cold minus 20s and minus 30s, and some of that Arctic air has spread into Quebec. Temperatures down below minus 30 this afternoon, and minus 20s all the way into Labrador. So that is definitely some cold air on the move. So let's start looking at the dynamics and the upper level patterns. The polar vortex, or at least one segment of it, located over Baffin Island, more segments of the polar vortex across Siberia, and we've got that strong Pacific flow moving into the northeastern Pacific and making this detour around a deep trough that's responsible for some of the inclement weather there on the west coast. The upper level low at 300 millibars located around northern California near Fort Bragg and Arcata. And the lower level circulation is a little bit further south towards the warm air. The jet stream running about like that coming on shore right around Los Angeles. So that's helping to create some of the dynamics supporting that low-level jet flowing into that region. And then we pick up another segment of the polar front jet. Very strong there, about 160 knots over the Great Lakes. And let's see how that unfolds going into the weekend. We break off a cutoff low off California. So the bad weather not quite over for Southern California. And then finally, over the weekend, Saturday night into Sunday, it starts making its move into the Southern Rockies. So the weather will start getting interesting in that part of the country, the Four Corners, New Mexico and Arizona, Saturday night and Sunday. And then that emerges as a trough in West Texas right there. And the Southern segment of the jet running about like that. The Northern segment, a little bit further up there towards Canada. So we're about Sunday night here, and then that little trough opens up and not much of it left. That, that was the that was originally that cutoff low there in California. And by Monday night, just a little weak system there in the Midwest. But here we go with another possible chance of bad weather in California. Strong energy coming down the backside. 
and that's always a recipe for deepening and we go into tuesday and wednesday it does take some time there goes another segment and we get this digging of this trough there in the southern rockies for midweek going into thursday some very strong jet stream dynamics in the southern plains it's going to be interesting to see if that couples with the tropical moisture we'll look at that shortly but that's a rather potent trough there definitely supportive of mcs activity and then we get another trough coming into california for the following weekend march 5th so we'll look at that next week now maybe you're wondering how do we get a closer look at those dynamics well you've come to the right place this is the 500 millibar vorticity and heights so this is taking a little bit of a closer look and of course we zoomed in as well so this shows the vertical motion field a little bit better this starts out this morning at 12 z let's bring it up to the current time most of the strong vertical motion fields are offshore probably in this region right there a little bit of channeling of that upper flow but a couple of advection lobes may be working onto the California coast around Los Angeles and we go into this evening and it looks like some of the stronger energy starts moving onshore and we go into Saturday night at this point it looks like a lot of the energy is channeled which means the vertical motion field is not going to be quite as strong but right here ahead of this strong lobe right there this is probably an area of strong vertical motion so we're looking at Saturday night about midnight around Las Vegas Kingman if there's enough low-level moisture that could support some strong precipitation and then we see things moving eastward that looks like a pretty good chunk of energy right there crossing Tucson early Sunday and then towards El Paso later in the day and then it moves quickly out into the plains by evening already past New Mexico that's the cold core low right there around Santa Fe so maybe some mountain snows in that region and this is moving pretty quickly so I'm not too sure this is going to have much access to moisture by Monday morning already in St. Louis and by evening around Pittsburgh so the one I'm mostly interested in is coming on shore right there looks like another stormy day for Wednesday in California and this one takes a more southerly track and it may be a little bit slower going into Thursday night and Friday and this is definitely capable of producing significant thunderstorm activity we're looking at about maybe Thursday night going into Friday and moving on to Alabama and Mississippi and we can look at the mass fields there this is uh, Thursday midday emerging out into Texas by evening approaching DFW San Antonio and overnight heading out towards Louisiana by dawn moving through Mississippi and by peak heating on Friday all the way into the Carolinas and here's how the dew point field looks this goes back to Wednesday evening I noticed one little wave right there around DFW moving up that boundary and that's got orange which means 60 degree dew points and above and then we see another wave developing there right around DFW on Thursday evening and I see maybe some depleted moisture there in Northeast Texas maybe some old outflow but there you can see the cyclonic flow around midnight Thursday night strong cold front moving into Houston warm front maybe somewhere in there and then things move eastward into Mississippi that's going to be Friday morning and with that mostly orange so looking at mid 60s dew points and then by evening rapidly moving into the Carolinas and still low 60s to mid 60s dew points and then we bring in some dry air back behind that and another way we can size things up is with the 850 millibar low level jet so we're looking at shading here indicating the wind velocity at 850 millibars up at about 5,000 feet with that initial first wave it looks like there's not much wind with that in fact it's pretty veered but the next wave comes out later on Thursday not starting out with much of a low level jet in fact most of the flow is behind this front 
So I'm not too sure if there's going to be much chance for severe weather in Texas. But things come together quickly overnight. You can see a strong 55, 60 knot jet developing over Louisiana at midnight Thursday night. And as we go into dawn, winds about 70 knots there. So that is certainly supportive of significant severe weather. Things spread pretty quickly to the east and then by peak heating on Friday, still maintaining a low-level jet, about uh, let's see, 50 to 60 knots up into the Carolinas. So if there's enough moisture up there, some potential for maybe tornadoes and a few supercells, but that's really too far away to call. We'll just monitor this and I think basically what I'm seeing here is the severe weather maybe kind of in this region here. Not too sure how far east or west, but that will bear watching. And before we go, let's take a look at temperature extremes. In the southeastern U.S., a lot of warm weather, up to 90 degrees there at Fort Myers. And earlier this morning, well, these are forecast values, so these aren't going to be exact, but we can definitely see on here some extreme cold weather. Minus 23 there at Great Falls, minus 22 at Sheridan. The actual temperature is probably pretty close to that. And yeah, minus 20s, that's going to be pretty extreme in my book. For tomorrow, official National Weather Service forecast temperatures back up near 90 degrees on the western Florida coast and more cold weather across the west coast region. 25 degrees there at Seattle. 18 at Portland, and a very cold 25 at Arcata. On Sunday, some moderation of that cold air mass, but still remaining quite warm in the southeast, 85 degrees there at Tallahassee. On Monday, we start pumping up more of that tropical air into the eastern U.S., so coming close to records all the way up into Ohio. And on Tuesday, some moderation, but still near 90 degrees at Palm Beach. On Wednesday, with another active system there in the Rockies, cold air flowing in from the Pacific, down into the 20s once again in California, and tropical air making its way inland with 85 at Houston and 92 at Del Rio. And more of the same for Thursday, warm in the southeast and cold in the west coast region. All right, so maybe next week we'll be able to shift gears and get a little bit more into severe weather, skew tees, convective forecasting techniques, and all that. So I'll leave you with some footage in the Texas Hill Country. A nice message from Alexander Williams. He says, I can't state enough how thankful I am for your videos. I learned so much from your videos, especially in analysis of the atmosphere with application to forecasting. Keep up the awesome work. Thank you, Alexander. I appreciate the message. And everybody else, thank you for watching and supporting the program. We'll see you back here on Monday for the supporters and on Wednesday for everybody else. Take care. Bye-bye.